We have a jam-packed week and transformative week full of planetary transits. We have a lot going on this week. It is a loaded week, especially with the 22nd being the most concentrated day of transits. Saturn goes direct this week, showing us where we might have matured since the month of June. Venus and the Sun is going into Scorpio this week, so this will rev things up and get us taking our relationship seriously, but also going beneath the surface when it comes down to our egos and our identity. And we have an even amount of Sun, Mercury, and Venus transits, causing us to work on issues with our ego, communication, our thought processes, self-worth, and our relationships as well as financial situations. On the graph absolutely reflect how busy this week is. At the beginning of the week, we have a ton of drive and ambition, good luck energy, mental energy, with romantic energy intersecting that. This has a lot to do with the Sun and Venus stuff that's going on. Even with some of these alignments being harder and edgy, they can rev up those areas because of the confidence levels and the edgy levels. We may feel more inclined to go after things that we want, whether that be our goals, whether that be stuff for our personal life, relationships, and any other aspirations that we might have throughout this week. Romance energy peaks on the 18th, then it starts tapering off as we get to the 20th. In the meantime, it has family and friends intersecting it, it has social energy intersecting it, and a bit of edgy energy. There is some emotional sensitivity that's coming up on the 19th with some of the transits that we have going on. Again, this week is mixed baggy. There are some easy alignments, but there are definitely some harder ones. One thing with the harder alignments, as I was saying prior, and I always say in my videos, they do pump us up, they do get us motivated, they get us taking action. So this could be a day where you might feel edgy, but you're on your grind. At the same time, there may be an underlying low-key edginess about that day around the 19th or so. We will have a steady stream of the family and friends energy throughout the week, so that'll be lasting until the 23rd. And there's a high amount of mental energy as we get to the 21st intersecting that, along with low-key solitude energy. Because of the low amounts of solitude energy, it could be an underlying feeling of just not wanting to be around people, but yet you're finding yourself around people because you'd rather be in your head, you'd rather be focusing on yourself and focusing on your goals, especially with that high amount of mental energy. But in the meantime, it's one of those unavoidable things when it comes down to socializing with family, friends, and whoever else might be around you. So yeah, it is going to be an interesting week for sure. Let's look at the next bunch of days and see what we can expect. As a reminder, don't forget to like and subscribe because it helps this channel grow. And if you'd like to support the work of this channel, you could do so by buying me a fresh cup of coffee. There's a link in the description box below. The next few days will have an interesting tone to it. Venus is going to be making a quincunx with Neptune, but this planet will also be connected to harmonious alignments to Mars and the Sun because Venus and the Sun are slowly approaching a conjunction. They will conjunct later in the week, especially as they're leaving Libra and going into Scorpio. But with this Venus-Neptune quincunx, we could experience a realization that we were overlooking red flags in a relationship or red flags within a job situation, a money opportunity, and things of that nature. So there might have been something we overlooked because either the person's words were vague, if it's a relationship situation, or they buttered you up so much that it came off like they were nicer than what they seem. And now some of these red flags are coming up. This could also relate to money situations or financial opportunities. It could relate to a job, maybe a job that you've been on for a while. You're realizing some discrepancies. You're realizing maybe a bait and switch situation and things of that nature. But this is one of those alignments where we could still be somewhat hazy, but we're starting to slowly see that something isn't right. Something seems a little bit fishy about the situation. So you could be taking a step back to figure out what your next course of action is with this energy. Luckily, from the 17th to the 18th, there are going to be some connections going on with the Sun, Mars, and Venus. The Sun is going to make a trine with Mars, and Venus is going to make a trine with Mars. This is because Venus and the Sun are only one degree away. They are about to conjunct one another. As a matter of fact, they're one degree away, so they're practically conjuncting with one another already. And they're both in this lovely trine with Mars, which is so needed right now, and honestly, one of the best ways to leave Libra season. And even though this is a retrograde alignment from the Sun and Mars. Also, its connection to Venus will come back around. These are harmonious alignments. With the Sun, we get this alignment every two years when Mars goes into retrograde. Outer planets and Mars make trines to the Sun right before or after they're going out of their retrograde cycle. So in about the next 13 days, Mars will go into retrograde. And this is what this alignment with the Sun is. It's a marker for the retrograde. It's also a very energizing alignment. So we could feel energized. We could feel motivated. This is where that good luck energy and that optimism was coming 
coming from along with the Venus stuff. Venus is one of the benefics. We're getting that extra dose of good luck as a result. If this was Jupiter, it would probably be higher on the chart, but Venus brings it in its own brand of luck. So this can come in the form of going after opportunities. This could bring in luck in regards to financial situations, pursuing things with jobs. And because Mars is here and the sun is involved in this, this is about taking action. This trine is not one of those lazy trines. Sometimes the trines, a lot of the times the trines, trines make everything easy and things come easy. So there's a tendency to be lazy and rest on your laurels because you're already reaping the rewards. But this is one of those where we have that go out and get them mentality. So this alignment in itself is going to be action oriented, which is lovely. So whatever you're trying to create for yourself, whatever you're trying to attract to yourself, whatever you're trying to go after, whatever you feel pumped and motivated to go after, it should be easy with this. And although this is a Mars retrograde alignment and during those times we do a lot of review. So this could be a moment where you're trying to find the best strategy for yourself to start something. You could be taking this moment to write down a strategy you'd like to employ at some point. So that way when you do come back to it, maybe after the retrograde, when it goes into pre shadow and we get these alignments again because they will come back around of course separately because Venus will move forward from the sun but they will come back around January-ish February. So that way by the time you get to the part of early 2023 you're ready to start something and take action on your goals whatever that might be for you. On the 19th the sun's going to be making a square with Pluto. The 19th in itself has an edge to it that's why we were seeing some of that emotional sensitivity show up on the chart and with the sun making a square to Pluto this could be a day where we're either having to check our own ego or we're having to be aware of someone else's and more or less pick and choose our battles because someone is coming off edgy, someone is coming off demanding, they're demanding that you put the focus on them. In other words, it could be someone who has quite an ego on them and they feel as though all eyes need to be on them. So they're grabbing all the attention, they're sucking up all the air in the room, they're being kind of an energy vampire because they demand so much from other people in terms of fulfilling their needs, in terms of in terms of being entitled. And feeling like everybody else is just there to cater to them or there for their amusement this tends to bring up main character syndrome so so it could be dealing with people like that with fragile egos and if no one's feeding that ego if no one's feeding that monster they could lash out so it's an uncomfortable energy for that reason on top of that mercury is making opposition with chiron which could further cause issues in terms of communication and interacting with others overall so with an energy like this we could either feel misunderstood by others or we could feel as though other people are are taking our words the wrong way and think that we're misunderstanding them so it brings in complications in that sort of way this could be a day of thinking that you said the wrong thing and feeling self-conscious about it or you start dwelling on the past and thinking of negative things that happen or negative interactions with other people causing you to feel more insecure than typical and this could also drudge up situations with people who are super defensive and they're not able to either take a joke or just communicate effectively without taking everything so personally so it could cause so it can cause disputes as a result of this. So do the best you can on the 19th because the energy is edgy as hell. On the 22nd, Saturn goes direct. Saturn went into its pre-shadow retrograde on February 26th of 2022, then went retrograde on June 4th of this year. So think about what was occurring in your life since those time periods, since the shadow period, and since Saturn went retrograde. What's been occurring regarding limits in your life? Where have you been setting boundaries? Saturn is about contraction in our life and about limits in our life. And so some of these limits can be that you're limiting yourself from certain behavior. Some of it can be limiting other people. Some of it could be stripping away things that are not necessary. It could be a period of paring down certain areas of your life, whether that's clothes, lifestyle, diet, the amount of work you're doing. So if you've been spinning your gears for too long in any area of your life, this could have been a time of narrowing your focus on the right things and the appropriate things that are going to ensure your success. Has this been a period where you've been looking to create more structure in your life? Especially if things have been disorganized, there are things in your life that have no shape, no form, no system or order. Has this been a period where you've been looking to do that or learn the art of discipline within your life? Was this period a point where you were looking to commit yourself to something? That way you're becoming more mature, you're becoming more responsible, you're taking more responsibility and also being more accountable for yourself, accountable for other people if that's your situation. But overall with Saturn retrogrades, we look to restructure our lives so that way we can have a stable foundation 
emotions and create stability in our lives in any way we can. So this retrograde could have helped you guys create a more structured plan for your lives overall. As we're leaving that Saturn retrograde, it's going to make a trine with Mercury. Mercury is making the trine with Saturn. And this also involves creating a solid game plan. As Saturn is stationing, it is going to create some stronger transits because when planets are still, they have more of a potency to them. With it making this connection to Mercury, we're going to feel this intensely, but in a good way. This is going to help us create a nice game plan for ourselves. So if you've been fiddling with something over the retrograde, this could be a day where you're having a moment where you're finally clear about what direction you want to go, what type of long-term plan you want to create for yourself. You can finally feel clear about your objectives and the direction you want to take something. And you can finally feel like you're getting somewhere. An alignment like this can also help us revisit communication that wasn't necessarily going the way we wanted it to or work through something contractual that may not have been working out the way we expected it to. And this could be a day where we're fixing that. This could be a day where we're actually finding a solution to whatever was the problem or diffusing any drama with other people and more or less meeting with people in a way that's mature, communicating with people in a way that's mature and really getting things done. And we're absolutely going to need that because Mercury is making a quincunx to Uranus on that day. So that alignment completely contradicts the Mercury-Saturn situation. With Saturn being at full strength, it may mitigate and more than likely mitigate this Mercury-Uranus quincunx that we have going on. Even though we've got this Saturn alignment, I would still take your time, especially if you have something detailed orient that you need to take care of, because the Mercury quincunx with Uranus could cause us to feel slightly mixed up at times. So there could be some hiccups that day. There could be moments where things just don't go as expected. So you just want to go slow as you possibly possibly can, although that Saturn situation with Mercury might end up mitigating that completely. But it never hurts to be cautious, so why not? Also on that day, the Sun's making a conjunction with Venus right before Venus goes into Scorpio and the Sun follows shortly after. So again, the Mercury-Uranus situation, it may be more background stuff than anything else. It may be more low-key because with the Sun conjunct Venus, this is a lovely energy where things tend to go our way, especially when it comes down to love life, finances, career, making plans. The Sun conjunct Venus is about starting new chapters in these areas and looking at what new path we want to start when it comes down to our financial situations and relationships. This could be a day where we have a ton of romance in the air. This could be a day where it's super flirty. You're getting attention from the people that you're actually interested in. Coming at the end of Libra, this can be a finalization of a stagnant situation before you have a breakthrough when it comes to love and money. Also, with this being at the 29th degree, there could be a sense of urgency. And not in a bad way, but a sense of, I need to take action right now on this situation. Again, whether it be a relationship, whether it be a financial situation, or something that brings fairness to your life, this could be a day where you're feeling more compelled to act than normal when it comes to those things. And this will carry on as we go into Scorpio, because this could bring us to a period where we're taking things more seriously when it comes down to those areas of our life. By the time we get to the 23rd at 12.52 a.m. Pacific, Venus moves into Scorpio. The sun will end up following about three hours later, but for right now, we get Venus and Scorpio. As we leave the charming, beauty-loving vibes of Venus and Libra, we move into an energy that's more intense and about going deep beneath the surface when it comes down to our relationships and financial situations. Venus and Scorpio helps us take shit seriously, especially when it comes down to our love life, especially when it comes down to our finances, and any Vesnusian things that we apply ourselves to. And for this reason, Venus tends to have a harder time in Scorpio because Venus doesn't want to take things seriously. Venus wants to let its hair down, enjoy itself, have fun, feel good, eat chocolate, buy the best clothes, go shopping, and throw caution to the wind completely. It doesn't get to do that in specific signs. Venus is ruled by Taurus and also obviously Libra. And those signs are easy signs. They're easygoing signs. Taurus is about the soft life. And Scorpio is the opposite of Taurus. And Scorpio is not necessarily associated with the soft life at all. So in essential dignities, this puts Scorpio in a position called detriment. While it's in the sign of Venus, it's in a completely opposite energy and it's a bit uncomfortable. This is not to say that we won't have a good time in Venus and Scorpio. It just tends to have more struggle in this energy. Venus and Scorpio, we want to go deep beneath the surface. We're not about that superficial shit in Venus and Scorpio. And we tend to look for connections with depth. We tend to look for connections that actually have layers and 
substance because otherwise it's a waste of our time. Scorpio is an energy about deeply connecting with other people. It's about melding with your partner, placing focus on everything that you do and doing things intensely. So when it comes down to love life situations, this could be a period where we're narrowing down our options and looking for connections that will actually sustain us, that will be there for the long haul, that we can deeply commit ourselves to, that we could deeply devote ourselves to, and vice versa. So romantically, those types might become more pronounced in your dating life if you're single. If you're in a relationship, this could rev up intimacy in a way that's more intense and more connective, because this does give a higher chance of connections that are more intense than usual. So this could bring to the forefront of your dating life if you're single, connections with people who have more of a karmic tone to them. There's more of a soulmate tone. There's more of a spiritual tone. And interestingly with that, even if you are single and you're looking to date, this can also bring in more of an apprehension when it comes to other people because your trust becomes low in Scorpio, which can be a good thing, but also can become an unhealthy thing as well if it's not curbed. Scorpio, we approach things with caution, so this could transfer into our dating life, also within our career and our, and our financial situations, causing us to take our time with certain things and observe quietly before we open ourselves up and say yes to everything. So whatever we require within our love lives and career, we're going to prefer something more profound found. We're going to prefer something more transformative, getting into transformative unions, finding something transformative when it comes down to our work and what we're passionate about. But really, it's going to be all about finding something we can seriously commit ourselves to. Obviously, there's a lower vibration with this as there is anytime there's a sign change. And with this, we have to be aware of being overly suspicious, being overly distrusting, like I was saying earlier. This can bring up some power struggles in relationships, especially if there's a control issue or one person is trying to control another person. This can bring out that sort of combative energy. So it's definitely something to be watchful for. So do the best you can when this energy hits, because if you couldn't get enough Scorpio, we get more Scorpio energy on that same day, just a few hours later. At 3.34 a.m. Pacific, the sun will enter Scorpio. Happy birthday, Scorpios. It's your turn to be magnetic. And that's another thing with Scorpios. They have a magnetism about them. And that energy is magnetizing too. So that's going to apply to that Venus. And it's also going to apply to this. As we leave the peaceful vibes of Libra, we go into a more intense approach to doing things. So in terms of our ego, our persona, how we shine, it goes into this more magnetic and intense way to get our ego needs met. When we go into Scorpio, things become less superficial and we get this need to be deep and profound about our life overall. We get this urge to have more truthfulness and to have more realness in our life. We're less impressed by people who flex and try to get attention or a person's appearance or what they have. And we're more interested in something deeper. We're more interested in substance. We're more interested in people who have layers or just situations that have depth to them. We become more interested in the truth and speaking the truth and not sugarcoating our words. I mean, especially once we get into Mercury and Scorpio, which we'll have a Scorpio stellium for a little bit soon. This is going to kick up our need for truthfulness and to have deep, profound conversations with other people. This could be a period of purging out what's no longer necessary and doing a much needed detox. So if there's been anything in your life that's been causing any disruption or bullshit or has left you off kilter, this could be a period where you're shedding all of that. Because Scorpio wants us to transform. It wants us to shed what's unnecessary in order to make way for something better. This is the energy where we get into our personal power and we learn how to stand tall. We learn to narrow our focus on the right things and the things that we're passionate about also placing our focus on the right people so that we're not filling up our time with meaningless relationships. And again, this can apply to that Venus and Scorpio as well. So our needs go to something that's deeper and something that could be more long lasting in our lives because let's face it, the superficial situations in our lives, they're fleeting. They're not going to be long lasting. With the Scorpio energy, we're called to look for something that's better, something that's going to offer security and you're going to gain security from those more meaningful exchanges with other people and putting yourself in situations that are more solid, whether it be career, whether it be other things in your personal life, you want to look for the things that actually have layers to them. This also adds that layer of caution that I was speaking of before. You know, with the Scorpio stellium we'll have this year and all the other planetary stuff going on, there may be an extra bit of caution than we normally have. We generally have that little air of caution when the sun is in Scorpio and when we have big Scorpio times, but this could be a period where you're taking your time and you're not rushing into things and you're just being slightly guarded with your everyday life approach. 
within this energy that could be more ramped up. And that's not a bad thing. Sometimes we do need to take our time and be cautious and proceed with caution. We don't need to jump into everything. At the same time, there needs to be a balance with this energy, as I was stating before with the Venus and Scorpio situation, because it can get out of hand sometimes. Of course, there's a lower vibration to this, as there is anytime there is a sign change. We have to be mindful of being overly controlling within this energy because sometimes the ego gets fed by controlling others, by dominating things, possibly dominating the conversation or dominating the room or just whatever else you can control within your life that could be problematic. We do have to be aware of our need to fixate on things because this also is the type of energy where it's great for being focused on things. At the same time, we can find ourselves in the thralls of an obsession of something and it's just something to be aware of because this energy can go into deep fixation mode and all of a sudden you've got a bit of an obsession on your hands. It doesn't necessarily have to be a person. It could be a new passion that you're completely fixated on or some deep research where you've gone down some crazy rabbit hole and you're not pulling yourself out of. Just something to be aware of when it comes down to this energy. Also, harsh words and you know it's a very honest energy so sometimes we could say some things that are very much cutting and it's something that you want to be aware of when it comes down to this also the depositor for scorpio is going to be in retrograde the ancient ruler mars will be in retrograde so we can have some issues come up during the scorpio season it is depositing that venus as well it'll deposit that mercury so things can be a little bit more ramped up communication wise especially with mars being in gemini and this could create some conversations that are coming off really cold and cutting and just brutal so this could be difficult within this energy during this scorpio season on top of that we'll have an eclipse that's occurring within this scorpio energy as well so this scorpio season in itself will definitely bring in that intensity that scorpio is known for so do the best you can when these energies hit and on that same day, the Sun and Venus will be quincunx to Jupiter. So this could bring up some crazy behavior. Crazy in a fun way, not crazy in a bad way. The only thing is you have to be aware of what you're doing. Be aware of what you're doing in terms of being overindulgent, being egotistical, not being aware of your personality and how your ego is coming off to other people. Again, with Venus, the Sun, and Jupiter together, this could definitely bring in an overinflated sense of self. This could bring in a little bit of drama and some arrogance but also it could bring in a sense of adventure and going out and doing some Sunday fun day stuff and really just overdoing it when it comes to drinking and other indulgences in your life so do the best you can when these energies hit because we are definitely heading for some wild energy intense energy at least this one is fun you just have to be aware of coming off too cocky when it comes down to things anyway I hope you all have the best week ever later and see you in the next episode